Hi, I'd like to welcome you to a presentation of Advanced Marketplace's Mergeable App Version 2 for Property Management and Facilities. We're really excited about Version 2 because we've taken a lot of the information that we've learned from other implementations and taken the best of that and put it into this newest version. I'm going to take you into the system here in just a minute, but I at least wanted to give you a high-level overview of the areas that we're going to be covering. So work orders is the key part of this with the workflow around property management and facilities types of work. Of course, we're going to have the end user portal side of it, where end users can come in and report issues or request services from the facilities organization. There's a project component of this map as well. We are using the existing project tracking module within ShareWell, but we've enhanced it to have some more specific areas focused on the facilities side of the um, organization. We have modified the contracts module a little bit to be more specific and collect information for contract management. There are some new configuration items that represent the types of equipment that commonly the facilities organization has asked to capture. We also have mobility set up so that um, you can use the app, the ShareWall mobile app, to go out and view open work orders and work on those as well. And buildings has become way more important in this version. We've made it a new object, and it has a lot of additional functionality beyond what you would normally see around the location field. So let's go ahead and go into the demo. I'm going to start at the end user portal. You can see that we have another really nice example of an enterprise service management home page. In this case, we're showing that additional tenants can be added besides IT or property management as you expand your use of ShareWell. For an end user, it's really important to be able to come into one place, regardless of the fulfillment team, and see the status of their tickets. So we have a My Items and Tickets button here. And they can quickly see their open IT requests and incidents, property management work orders, and if you want to expand it then into HR or accounting or marketing, um, that can easily be added here. So if I go back out to the front, I'm going to go ahead and click on property management. And we go to a new home page here for property management. So this shows the ability to have something that is specific to the facilities and property management area. Um, put things very easily at the fingertips of the end users, such as frequently ask areas. We have the ability to go ahead and do the same thing that we did before, but look at specific work order status. So these are the open work orders and the closed work orders that we have out there. Let me go ahead and take a look at one of these. We've cleaned this up nicely that we're um, presenting the uh, ticket information here as well as tracking any journal comments between the end user and the technician, and capturing any specific information as well. The work order is a separate business object, but it has a lot of the functionality that's really good from incident management, including the ability to add specific forms to the different types of work orders. So if we go back and let's go ahead and open up a ticket as well, well, first, let me just show you over here. We have announcements, and these announcements are segmented by tenant. So you can have IT announcements, um, HR announcements, facilities announcements, and it's specific to the page that you go into. So in this case, we're only seeing facilities types of announcements. They also have an expiration date on them that will automatically time them out from this view. The other thing that we've introduced here is a really cool new way to render the catalog. So we have the category structure up here on a tab view. 
and then we have the different areas of the catalog listed here. Now these are not just listed here, this is dynamic. So this is a nice way to present the catalog view to the end user in a clean and crisp way by having the category structure um, here, but having it be dynamic. And as things are added to the catalog, they're automatically added to this view out here in the portal. So this is new. This is pretty cool. And let's go ahead and open up a work order so you can see that. So we come into, again, a, a clean view to start opening up our issue. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say lighting is dark entrance. Now here's building, and I'll show you this more when we get into the demo and the technician side. But I'm going to go ahead and look up the building information. And generally, this is something that's a separate table that's maintained by the facilities organization. So when you're thinking about location in an incident ticket, this is really usually different. And we import those into uh, a business object called building code. And we'll look at the functionality around that later. Cost code is also something that is captured uh, really commonly on work orders because there are a lot of materials that end up needing to be potentially billed back. I'll go ahead and submit this, and we'll go take a look at that one when we go um, into the client. But in the meantime, um, I, here's the view of my ticket, and we can see that it's uh, in a new status, and it's already been um, assigned a work order type and category that we'll see inside the ticket. Okay, so I think that's enough on the end user side. Let's go ahead and go into the client. So when I come into the um, and log in to the facilities map, I see a really nice, clean, and crisp dashboard. And again, uh, it works the same as with other modules in ShareWell. We have different teams, different security groups. And based on um, your security group and team, you're given a default dashboard. This happens to be the default facilities team dashboard. We're capturing building activity, teams, status, work orders owned by my team, easy to pick out, the, and, and then recurring work orders, which is something we'll talk about here in a minute as well. Now here's the work order that I opened up from the portal. We come into a view of that ticket. It's a facilities ticket for lighting. It's automatically been assigned to the facilities team. You can see that we have a full catalog running underneath this. So this is the facilities management subcategory. Uh, then we also have a work order type. Now, when we get to the uh, recurring maintenance one, you'll see that it is an entry here in the subcategory. So we brought over the information from the portal. You can see that we have um, work statuses above here. And so you have a, a process flow that we go through. And down here at the bottom, then, we also have um, the different tabs that are related to work orders. Proposals is something brand new. What we found when we were working with our customers is they often needed to go out for um, a proposal to get and fix whatever was happening as part of that work order. And so we've added a new supporting table to capture this type of information. Let me t let you take a look at building. So this is the building Estevan Hall. If we go take a look at building, I'm going to click this blue arrow here, we can see some additional information. And we have um, this as its own object, so we have the ability to have relationships and additional information that's going to be used for reporting. So you can see we're capturing some property management fields as well. We have contracts that can be related to the building. We can associate work orders and any of the work orders that have already been opened up against this building are listed here. There can be suppliers that are associated to a building, so you may have a cleaning supplier. You could have the um, maintenance 
uh, for cleaning off the sidewalks. Um, and then we also have the equipment information as well. We'll take a look at that in a minute too. And then any projects that are associated with the building. Let's go take a look at contracts here for a second. In the contract module, what we've added is the ability to segment contracts from information technology versus IT proper, or versus property management. And so property management um, has categories, and we have specific forms to collect the information based on the, the category of the contract. So this is extended functionality here. In this case, we have a lease specific form capturing the lease information um, for people and the tenants that are leasing space from the building that we were just in. So then we back out to the building and then we'll back out to the um, work order again. Some other information about the work order, you can track time to the work order. And like in the incident, this will roll up. So we've tracked five hours to this, um, to this work order. I can also track costs. Let's see, we got it from Home Depot. And so those are being tracked to the work order as well. Now, if this was associated to a project, though, that time and those materials would be rolled up to the project and available to be seen up there. And I'll show you an example of that as well. And one other thing I just want to show you from here um, how it would work is that we have the ability to do recurring maintenance. So let's say that this was a um, uh, an area that we wanted to have something happen repeatedly on, I can collect, I can click on the schedule recurring work order, the frequency of it, the start date, and how many times I want it to occur. And when I click save on this, it will create four work orders starting on September 19th. And it will only um, show a view of them in your dashboard if they're within 30 days of when it needs to start working. So it doesn't clutter up your, your view of the work that you need to have. And just like with any dashboards, you know that you have the ability to change the query that goes here. So here's an example of some of the work orders that we have already scheduled. Let's go ahead and um, here are the proposed dates. If we take a look at one of them, this is an athletic field setup, and it has a proposed start date, and it's been assigned to a person already. Let me show you a project. So project is on top of the ITPT project management object in ShareWell, but we've extended this to include some additional functionality. So we put a couple of different portfolios in as examples. Um, what we find with our facilities organizations is they have capital improvements, ongoing maintenance, renewal and refresh of the different facilities, and they have budgets that are up at that level. And so they like to track the individual projects against that budget. In this case, I have opened one called Handicapped Access Sidewalk Conformance. You can see over here that I have a couple of work orders that have rolled up some time to this project. If I look over here at the work order tab, I can see that I have two different work orders for the, um, the different buildings that need to have this work done on them. So um, this is nice and easy to use from a facilities management perspective without interfering with the existing functionality. So 
hopefully you have a feel now for the functionality that is available in this new version 2 facilities map. If you have any questions, go to our website at www.advancedmarketplace.com and contact us. We can answer any questions that you have, schedule a full demo uh, at your request. Uh, and you won't be able to see a lot of our other portal examples that we have built for other customers. Thank you.